So the first thing that you need for breaking up glass is safety glasses. The second thing would be gloves. It's in your best interest to wear gloves, although I do not use them. The third thing you need is glass. <laughs> and I do this out in the garage in a wooden box with a hard surface. I started by doing it in plastic tubs. And after a while, the glass was puncturing through the plastic and uh, little shards of glass were falling out the bottom. So this is why I switched to this wooden box. My husband actually made that. But you could probably put something hard at the bottom of a plastic bin, um, like a cutting board or something like that. And the next thing you have to do is cover it with something when you hit it because the shards will fly and it's very dangerous. That's why it's important to wear safety glasses. Then you need your tumbler, of course, and here I'm just picking up the little pieces of glass, throwing them in the tumbler. Then once you have it full with the glass, or actually about halfway full, it's time to add the grit. The grit is the uh, material that actually will kind of sand down the edges. And for this, I use 36 grit. I think they usually suggest 60 to 70 grit but I find that this sands it down faster and cuts down on the tumbling time. The next thing that you add is water, and the water should just cover the glass. Now, I usually tumble for up to seven days. The coarser the grit, um, you can actually tumble it for less time, and I have tumbled it for only three to four days. So it just depends on how smooth you want it and the look that you want. And you'll discover that after you, um, you know, start doing it. So these are the two tumblers, Dan and Darcy and the National Geographics. And you can see the difference in the size of the barrels. And for this one, of course, I'm using the National Geographics, which is a little bit larger. And it has um, three speed settings. It has um, w speed one, two, and three, and then you can set it for however many days you want, up to, I believe, nine days of tumbling. And you just turn it on, and it does all the work for you. So here I'm just showing you my other two tumblers. I have an MGR 40-pound tumbler, which is the red barrel, and a 65-pound tumbler, which is the big black barrel that's turning now. So for this, I let it tumble for seven days, and after seven days, I took it outside, I removed the top, and I dumped it into a colander. You do not want to rinse this in your kitchen sink because the grit will ruin your piping. Um, you want to do this outside. So um, I dumped it into the colander and rinsed it off with the hose. And you can see how bright and pretty that turned out. It really turned out pretty. So after the initial rinsing and I have the majority of everything off of it, I take it into the house and I rinse it one more time in the sink and then I dump it out on a towel to dry. And uh, sometimes I'll put some baby oil on it because once it dries, it looks very frosted, which is what regular sea glass looks like, but I kind of like it shiny. So after it dries, a lot of times I'll put a little bit of baby oil on my hand and rub it into, into the glass and let that sit for about a week or dry for about a week. And it really over time kind of absorbs back into it, but I think it looks pretty like that. Hey everyone. Okay, so now we have the glass all tumbled. One of the things that I forgot to say before you tumble the glass or before you break up the glass, you probably want to consider what project you're doing um, as to how small or large you want the pieces. Like if you're doing one of the um, big windows and you want the, you know, the petals for flowers bigger, you want to break it up bigger. Or if you're doing something small like the like a seahorse project like this one, you want the pieces tiny and like this would just be way too big for it. So you have to kind of consider the project that you're wanting to do. So the other thing, I always put a tiny bit of baby oil on my glass to make it shiny. This I haven't, well this one I did a couple of them but not all of them, but they do turn out frosted which is what real sea glass looks like. So if you're wanting it more realistic, you know, keep it frosted. And I just happen to like it shiny. The other way I get it shiny is by pouring the resin on top of it. So, you know, it just depends exactly what you want. So um, this glass turned out real pretty. 
and um, I have a video that talks about the glass to use uh, for tumbled glass. And it was one of my very first videos, but just to touch on it a little bit, you want glass that has the coloring all the way through it. If it's not all the way through it, if it's something painted, a lot of vases, those are the most deceptive, have uh, paint on it, inside and outside. And you think, oh, this is a beautiful purple vase. Um, you know, I'll get purple sea glass and you, <laughs> you break it up and put it in the tumbler and it comes out clear because it takes all of the paint off. So this would be an example. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen really any purple glass, but you can look at the bottom. A lot of times at thrift stores and garage sales, there'll be like a scratch on it and you'll see clear through it or the very bottom of the vase is clear, then you that's a hint that this is not um, purple glass all the way through. And another type of glass that you can't tumble, this is just a finish on it and this will come off. I wish I could tumble this, <laughs> it would be so pretty. But um, this you could use, you know, for broken glass art. But anyway, so, um, so not only the color and to make sure that it's all the way through it, but the thickness. Um, the, I think the thicker the glass, the chunky glass looks prettier as sea glass or as faux sea glass. And so an example would be you wouldn't want to use a wine glass. A wine glass would be real, real thin, um, you know, something of that nature. But, uh, you know, the glass that I used was nice and chunky. Look at how chunky that is. And I think that... Um, looks better but you know it's all up to you the other thing um i've been learning about this other glass it's called cased glass and we talk about glass being painted on the inside and the outside well cased glass is glass that has is glass on each side but has clear glass or a different color glass in the middle and this red glass that i broke up in the video um I don't know if you can see, it's red on each side. It's not painted, that's the glass. And on the inside, it's clear. And I had done a video a little while back about um, uh, with these hearts. And I thought this is so interesting and I didn't realize what it was at the time, but do you see how it's outlined clear around the outside? Um, so that's just like this. So that one, uh, red vase that I broke up in the video, it goes, it ends up like this. So it's not painted. It's actually three layers of glass and it's called cased glass. And that's what gives it that look. And um, the other thing, when I first started tumbling glass, uh, I just break it up and throw it in the tumbler and you know, however it comes out, it comes out. But I've recently started to shape glass and then put it in the tumbler to take the sharp edges off. And then this would be an example, these hearts. So um, I had already tumbled them and they were odd shapes. And the ones that were, you know, kind of came to a point in the middle, I took my nipper tool, I have a nipper tool, and I took a little piece right out of the top to make it shaped like a heart. Threw it back in the tumbler for a couple of days and they came out like that, which was so cool. So, I mean, if you're just starting, you probably don't want to start by shaping your glass, but you know, as you get into it, it I find it real interesting. So um, anyway, as far as the tumblers go, uh, the two small tumblers that I have are the Dan and Darcy and the National Geographics. And I started out with the Dan and Darcy. You know, when I first started, I had no clue what I was doing. I looked on Amazon and I just picked one. I went by, you know, pretty much the reviews. But the difference between the Dan and Darcy and the National Geographic, look at the size of the barrel. So you could hold twice as much. So I ended up, you know, this one, then this one, and then I have those other two tumblers out there that are like uh, 40, I'm gonna fall off this chair, that are um, uh, 40 pound and 65 pound tumblers. Um, so, I mean, this would be a great starter one. This one's a little bit over $100, I think. I've got both of these linked um, in under description where it says more information. But um, this National Geographic's one, so I've been doing it for about two and a half years now. And um, so this one, honestly, this ran nonstop for at least a year. And then I got this one 
and this has been going, was going nonstop for um, almost two years, I guess, or a year and a half. And so, uh, the, like I said, they're both really good tumblers, but you, you really have to consider what you want. If you can, if you're going to be doing a lot or, you know, would like to do bigger pieces too, that's the other thing you have to consider because you can't put, um, you know, a piece like this for a flower petal, if you're gonna do a big window in this one, you would have to use something larger like this. So you have to take all of that into consideration and just follow the instructions. They each come with their own instructions. Usually you fill it about half full and then cover it with water and you put grit. That's the other thing you need is something called grit. And um, I have used sand before. The coarser the grit, so the lower the number of the grit, I use 35 grit, the faster it's going to grind it down and smooth it out. So the higher the grit um, is more for shining it, and the lower the grit um, will smooth it out. And um, usually they say use 60 to 70 grit with the tumbler, but I use 35. It just does it a lot faster. <laughs> but you have to you know, wash it off really well. And um, I'm trying to think what else I can tell you. If you have any questions or comments, you know, please ask. I love to hear from you. I love to see what projects you're doing. I'm happy to exchange any information. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That helps the channel. If you want to be notified of future videos, subscribe and you'll be notified. And have a great day. Thanks for watching.